Hey guys, Richie here. Welcome to the late, latest part of my studio build. Now remember a few weeks ago, this was just a garden shed falling apart. And look how, we're, how we are now. We're almost done. So this week, we're going to look at building the framing and building the workspace, the desk, using IKEA kitchen counters and bringing the furniture in behind me. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now we've got the construction done. It's kind of getting the desktops and the furniture. So I mentioned before, I got IKEA Saljan, I think it is, um, kitchen countertops, six foot, um, a six foot, and then I got an eight foot one to go down there, which needs to cut, cut down a little bit. So this whole kind of horseshoe is going to be kitchen countertops. Now, support the weight, I'm going to run, as you see, a two by four batten around the inside. And then I've got a few of these guys out at drawers and cupboards kind of rested on too. So there should be too much of a gap where I do have like here where I do have like an overhang. I've got some um, thousand pound rated um, support, like shelf support kind of bars from Lowe's, which I'll show you later on. Um, but the rest of it, the side should be okay supported on just these guys. There should be too much of a gap um, in between for it to sag. Um, so it should be good. Now the problem is, um, well I've marked the studs, my stud finder is crap. So that's this one didn't work. So let's go buy another stud finder. Um, and then obviously just drilling these guys into the stud, um, make it nice and secure. Now the problem is this isn't square, as we know, the building isn't square and the floors aren't level, that kind of thing. Actually, you know, it kind of slopes. It kind of slopes towards me slightly. So if I was going to do the, these, it's about a quarter, on this six foot strip, there's about a quarter inch difference. So if I was to level the count, the um, the count stops or desktop, um, which I should do, that side's going to be about a quarter inch higher. But the thing is, when you walk in the door and look at it with the floor and the um, counter, the countertop or desktop, it just doesn't look right. It looks way off um, the proportions and stuff. Now, really slightly off, like again, quarter of an inch difference in the six um, foot strip. So I'm just going to do it out of sync and just do it level with the floor. So we're following the floor and the, the walls. Um, so it measured against here. So it's the same height, um, against this guy. And then obviously, you know, it's going to sit on top and rest on here, another one next to it. And then we're going to run some more, um, obviously on each of the walls. So that's what I got going on. Um, it's middle charging stuff right now. My, my drill died on me. Um, so yeah, charging up and I'll get this piece put in and then, um, I'm gonna leave a gap in the middle just so I can run wires down. I'm leaving a gap in the corner too, two to three inches here in the corner. So again, I can run, you know, wires down in between if I need to, um, each corner in the middle here, just a lot of space. Um, yeah, and there we go. So just go get these guys in, uh, making progress. And I'm just putting a couple in right now just to see, get all lined up. And then I can put the rest in the studs. Hopefully that should hold it. Like I said, um, as long as I hit the studs, we should be good to go. All right, it's real quick, because these aren't even really secured that well to the, to the studs yet, just a couple of screws. I haven't done, done to every stud. So out of breath, so I just carried one of these in from the house. Yeah, pretty heavy, but you can see it's resting on there. It's a little bit of sag, but we do have another um, drawer unit to go next to the cupboard there. Um, so we'll see how that is. If need be, we can add another uh, brace underneath, um, but it should be okay. So just again, just resting, a couple of screws. It needs to be secured a little bit more. Um, and that's the... Again, the, the kitchen counter is a little bit wider than desk. And then we're going to go, you know, across here and then, you know, cross down towards me as well. Um, as you see, there's strategic breaks in the um, two by fours. So I can run, if I want to, I can run cable down to the outlets. Um, my computer's going to be in the middle there too. So yeah, looking good. I just want to see how it looks. Um, again, the floor isn't straight. So it's all figuring out how things look. Um, to me, that looks pretty good. I walk in, doesn't look off sensor or anything. It looks pretty decent. And again, just needs a little bit more support. You can see the sag already. Um, but hopefully those drawers next to it should help that. But yeah, there we go. So that's working out nicely. I'm going to, it's late, I'm getting late tonight night now. So I'm going to take this off. Um, so it doesn't go any damage. And then tomorrow, I'm happy that I can start putting the rest of the screws in the studs and really securing these things in. Okay, so lots of progress this morning. So I went to Home Depot first thing, got a two 10 feet for two by fours. Now, God, can't believe it. They actually fit my car. They're up for the passenger window by a couple of feet, but got them in there and put one across here um, and 18 inch long braces or supports in between two by fours. 
And um, remember the baton around the edges is drilled into the studs where possible. Um, so yeah, I, I figure this is a good way to go. Add a couple of supports, um, legs. These are two by three, super cheap, like three bucks for like an eight foot strip. So just those couple of things there really made it pretty sturdy. Not, not like I'm gonna dance in it or anything. And then couple with adding the, um, the Alex drawers with my paints in there actually fits them perfectly. So I took the casters off and figured that maybe need like a centimeter or so of a shim, but actually just squeezes in absolutely perfect. Um, so yeah, so these drawers and cupboards um, with a two by four is actually the same height as one of these Alex, wide Alex drawer things. Um, so yeah, so it's pretty rigid. Um, it's not going anywhere, I hope. And um, we're in good shape. So you get an idea of the workspace now as I kind of back out. So you got the six foot piece lung here, um, brought in my 3D printer. Uh, my plastic one, I'm gonna put my resin printer there and the wash station, hopefully if I've got space, in this little area right here. My spray booth, I just put in the corner. Then I can have the work all the way down here and the cross towards us. This is gonna be my little workspace here, a computer in the corner and just open space there, um, pretty much. But yeah, it's surprising, you know, once you've got the stuff in, it looks way smaller, right, than, than you imagine. But nevertheless, we're gonna shoehorn it all in. So um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at with this. Um, so pretty good with the battening, with the, um, the framing. I just need to literally just, I can take a break, maybe next weekend when I've got some more energy, get the other two pieces of desktop out and cut, need to cut those um, to fit in, in the space there. And then we are good to go. So I just want to give you an update on the furniture, get an idea of the layout here. Um, you might have seen this in the previous video, but um, that's kind of where we're going with the workspace. We've got loads of drawers and cupboards and storage and drawers. And so you know, 3D printer, spray booth, and then this is my work area here, my tools in these drawers, computer in the corner, and if I pan out to this side, you can see the drawers. We've got the IKEA belly, the narrow ones in the corner, which can be awesome. Store a lot of stuff in those, and I've got another one actually to build to go next to it, and maybe if I've got room, I've got a, like a half size one to go in here too. Um, we shall see. I did buy some cool LED lights on Amazon, like 10 bucks, change colors, which I'm gonna run around the top here. Oh, run around the top here um, to get like a glow as well. So yeah, taking shape, looking really cool. And um, just got more belly bookcases. Well, one more belly bookcase to build and um, start putting the shelves on there as well. Okay, so kind of second piece of desktop or the Sao Jan kitchen counter from Ikea. As you can see, these aren't the best quality. I mean, if you're gonna build a kitchen, I necessarily wouldn't. I don't know if we'll go with this. It chips very easily, as you can see when you cut it. Um, but for what I need, you know, in a work bait station where you're going to throw paint down and glues and stuff, it's more than fine. But again, if you're building a kitchen, I'd probably splurge from a little bit better quality. So this is a bigger piece. This is the 96 inch piece, which is really heavy and two person lift. But I managed to drag it around um, in one piece without damaging it, fortunately, on my own because I've got nobody here to help me today. So 96, I wanted about 85 on the wall. So I cut, um, as you can see, cut some off. And the way to do it with a circular saw, I'm sure you guys know this, just a piece of wood, um, mark it down, clamp it, and then you've got a guideline, and then your circular saw just follows along here, and you get a straight line. So, cut that off, um, notch the corner, as you know, or may know, the, um, you know, we're going to run cables down for the computer and stuff, so, you know, cut a little bit so you can run wires down. And also halfway down another notch. Um, again, I got a break in the, the bat on the wall so you can run cables down again um, through here. And this is probably where my light's gonna go to clamp on here. So you also know, flush against the wall. So create those two cutouts. Um, this one may be a little bit bigger than what I intended, but hey, it's fine. I can always put a cap over it, free to print something if need be. Um, and um, yeah, so I left it this side. Um, obviously you do have the um, stickers go on the edge. This, I don't care, it's against the wall. And this is obviously the front where you got the um, you know slight kind of curve here along the front here. So yeah, that bit's cut. Um, use jigsaw obviously to cut out those two pieces. Well, not obviously, but use my jigsaw and smorgasbord of power tools. So yeah, getting there. So I'm gonna get this this one in. Um, to be honest with you, I just want to do a second coat of paint on the window um, above it before I put this in. And just rest this in place they don't need to be screwed they're so heavy they just stay in place and then once this one's put in so i have both ends i'm gonna both sides i'm gonna put the end i'm gonna do the end piece but i want to measure the end piece once these are in because the walls aren't straight 
Um, I know that. And um, hoping I'll put this in. I think I'm going to get about a quarter inch gap because the walls aren't straight. But I'm not obviously going to cut the whole thing. It's just going to be too risky for me and my, my skill level. So um, we'll just go with a little gap at the side if, that how, if that's how it is. But we might need to um, cut some funky angles on the piece, joining piece to make it flush. But yeah, so get this piece in and then um, we work on the final piece of countertop. Okay, so got the desks in, got them cut, no problem at all. Just the, these walls aren't square, so these lines have to cut slightly angled. So quarter of an inch pretty much, um, I think at the front, and it kind of goes back quarter of an inch. And this one here too, it kind of goes, and um, there we go. It was a little bit kind of, wasn't quite, well, the cuts are good, but the actual top itself um, wasn't, wasn't quite flush. So I've used these mounting brackets, um, mending plates and just screwed one at the front, one at the back, and kind of pulled them together. It's making a lot better surface. I guess I should have read the instructions. It said if you put masking tape on first and cut it, it doesn't, you don't get such a crappy kind of seam um, cracking and stuff, but hey-ho. So if you're going to do this kind of stuff, mask it and then cut it. Um, I do have these strips left over. They get glued in with contact adhesive, so I'm thinking maybe two things. Either silicone it or just use this and just you know, glue it down, um, hide those seams. But there we go, it's pretty sturdy. I mean, I wouldn't stand up and dance on it or anything, but looking good shape. So I just got my, um, these just arrived, my curing station and um, wash station for my resin printer. Not sure where they're gonna go. And um, get an idea of what we've got going on now. So pan around, all my tools there still. So pretty much done with the furniture side of things and we're main construction, it's all now bringing all the stuff in. So what I've got left to do, I've got a resin printer that's going to go there. I've got a Cricut machine, um, computer, and then just bring all my bits and bobs in pretty much. Got to put some shelves up still. Um, rock wrong size brackets Ikea, so I have to go back and change them uh, maybe next weekend. But that's kind of where we're looking. And if I kind of turn around this way, I built the other bookcase. So now we have four of them. And I'm going to do a lot half size um, in here too, um, where the ladder is. Um, but, but yeah, plenty of storage. Um, I see it's, it's still pretty big in here, um, even though there's counters and stuff in. But yeah, I would like some more desktop space if possible. But hey, we maximize the best we can. Um, it should be good space. Um, might even contemplate getting rid of my two monitors, get a curved monitor for the corner, um, save some space too. But we shall see. But there we go. So that's kind of state of play. I'm gonna take, that's it for me today. Um, I'm going to take a break and then start moving stuff across. And um, we can come back and check in see where I'm at. So taking shape and pretty much done really. I've got the blinds up. Um, JC Penny, watch the sales, um, you get good prices, any blinds for your house or anything. Um, Ikea shelves, got a couple there about the spray booth, put stuff on and the third one here. And um, they're perfectly level because the building isn't is kind of crooked, but maybe it looks slightly off, I don't know. Maybe we'll turn the camera like this and it'll make it a little straighter. Um, so I got my 3D printing stuff in and making hey, great progress with all this gubbins down here. And you can see when, when I went to Ikea, I had to get some um, shelf brackets. I got the wrong size. I bought a couple, few extra shelves, two for each. And as you can see, that lets you add way more stuff in here. And these Andy Hobby headquarters cases um, fit perfectly with a couple extra shelves um, in there. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a stack. Um, these are trumped cases too. So these three add a couple extra shelves to it. And I'm not sure I'm going to put in this bookcase yet. But we're making great progress. So I'm going to actually end the video here because I'm almost done. I've got a lot of stuff to put away. As you can see, all this stuff. So I'm going to go start and spray the um, compressor for the airbrush, all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to start putting stuff away, cleaning up a little bit, maybe get a few pictures on the walls. And then we'll come back next week and we'll do a final reveal. And... That's probably better to do a separate video because I'll do a final reveal slash man cave tour um, as one kind of video. So that'll be that video. And um, reminder, the very final video after that with all the costing, um, exactly what I spent and everything cost broke down. Um, I've kept the spreadsheet with every single line and what everything cost will be a Patreon only um, video on my Patreon channel. So you need to be a member of Patreon, um, just $2 a month um, to watch that video. And um, yeah. There you go. That's an exclusive video for them. So thank you for watching. Thank you for following along. Another part done. And we're back next week for the final reveal.